Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Exotic Astrology. I'm very excited to see this new direct motion of Saturn. So many things have started happening in like the last 48 hours. <laughs> so 4th of November, which was supposedly yesterday, Saturn went direct. Saturn was in retrogression from around June, I guess, right? June 2023. And we have seen so many things which have been happening, right? So what should we do during the time when Saturn goes direct? Because Saturn and Jupiter stays retrograde for very long periods of time in a year. And then the remaining periods, they are direct. Or sometimes they are combas, they are afflicted in transit. But nonetheless, now Saturn is direct, okay? So what should we do? How should we utilize these uh, periods, so what are some things we can do to improve our life, okay? So I have made a list of seven things which we should actually do, considering that this direct motion is in the sign of Aquarius, okay? So whenever you talk of Aquarius, it's very important that you also understand the sign of Leo. If you don't understand Leo, you cannot understand Aquarius because you have to understand why certain zodiac signs are placed opposite to each other how they can be opposing each other or complementing each other okay so this is very important for us to understand uh so if we understand one we can understand the other better or else we may either not understand or we may misunderstand okay and aquarius in my opinion is one of the most misunderstood signs like you don't know what is Aquarius. People, uh, if you ask Aquarius, what is Aquarius? You know, my, this planet is there in Aquarius. What will happen, right? So, of course, where Aquarius is, that will depend on your ascendant. But nonetheless, today we'll have a short discussion and uh, seven other steps which you can take that will help you to maximize this transit in the best possible way. All right. So welcome to Exotic Astrology, ladies and gentlemen, once again. And if you're new, then please like, comment, share and subscribe and also hit the thumbs up at the end. And also one uh, interesting and very good announcement I have from my side. So I will be in uh, India, in New Delhi uh, on 10th, 11th and 12th and 13th of November. So 10, 11, 12, 13. All right. So these four days I will be in New Delhi. So if anybody wants to have a personal consultation with me face to face, then uh, you can please send me an email at exoticastrology uh, at the rate of gmail.com. All right. So exoticastrology at gmail.com. So that's my email ID. I'll pin it down in the description. If you want to have a, a consultation, you can always uh, mail me there. All right. And I'll also be in Jagannath Puri from uh, what are the dates? I keep forgetting. <laughs> so Jagannath Puri, I'll be there from 15th uh, till 22nd. Okay, so 15th to 22nd, I'll be in Jagannath Puri. So if anybody is in Puri or around Puri and you would like to have a consultation, then you can also message me. And also I'll be in Berhampur, which is now known as Brahmapur in Odisha. Uh, if you are around that place uh, from 20, uh, 22nd to 25th, so 22, 23, 24, 25, then you can also uh, mail me and the later period till 17th of December from there onwards, I'll be in Guwahati. So if you are in Guwahati, uh, which is my hometown, and if you would like to have a consultation, you can also send me the email. All right. So let's get back to the topic. So you have to understand what, what is actually Leo. Leo, oh, but he's in Aquarius, right? No, you first have to understand Leo. Very, very, very important. Leo is desire. Okay, many people say Mars is desire. Well, it is, uh, but Mars represents more the implementation of desire because desires are not a product of Mars. It is a product of the sun, actually. And when people say Mars is desire, it it is actual, it is actually means that Mars is like, you know, overindulgence or aggression to pursue that desire. In that context, they say, oh, Mars is here. You know, you are very, you are, you are desiring this very much. Okay. But desire does not come from Mars because Mars only gives the body, but the body doesn't have desires, right? <laughs> 
the soul has desires and who is the significator uh, of the soul who is the atma karg natural atma karg that is the sun actually right as you know as i always say like jupiter is the pure soul it's the pure consciousness which has nothing to do with matter but when the soul comes to this material world then the soul is uh, it does not remain chit it becomes chitta okay so then this chitta is uh, it's like adulteration with matter so when this adulteration happens the soul starts identifying with material things and material objects so therefore now what happens is the soul is desiring something and for fulfilling that desire there has to be a body right there's a human body dog body cat body or whatever so then mars comes into play okay so you have to understand that leo is the prime sign of desire and that is why fifth house also shows your desires okay <clears throat> so now if you uh, want to understand aquarius you understand leo so for example leo is desire but now what is aquarius aquarius is the 11th house now what is 11th house 11th house is actually this is fulfillment of desires okay 11th house is social circle 11th house represents your friends your long term relationships okay now it's very interesting i mean what has long term relationships to do with the fifth house you know i mean fifth house is selfless love okay but 11th house is also desire so uh, but fifth house is desire no 11th house is fulfillment of desire so does it mean that uh, when uh, there's a planet in the 11th the desire is fulfilled or do you get a new desire or what does it mean it means that planets in the 11th will put desire on see because a planet in the 11th is aspecting uh, the planet in the 5th right so that means they are putting that desire and they may also most likely fulfill that desire and it's but natural that when you have a desire which is fulfilled then you get another desire right so for example you say oh i am uh, jobless i want to get a job then i want to earn 100000 dollars then i want to earn 1 million then i want to earn 10 million then 100 million then 1 billion you know then 1 trillion right so desires keep increasing but what we have to understand is that the 11th house is also the place where desires are desires are formed not from within but from the externals which means our associates with whom the people with whom we uh, as in hindi they say utna batna <laughs> the people with whom we roam around that they, they are the 11th house sometimes we don't have any desire but sometimes people around us they end up planting desires in our head right or in our soul sometimes so then they appear to be like our own desires but actually they are not our desires so that is why they say that association is very powerful and that is why it is also said that the 11th house is also the house of spirituality sometimes if used in a proper way because it is the third from the ninth house of the guru so the guru <clears throat> the guru actually the 11th house is actually where the guru is speaking okay so third house is the house of speech and 11th is where the guru is speaking okay so this means 11th house represents satsang community spiritual programs also any community material or spiritual it comes from the uh, 11th house because that shows gathering so if you visit a satsang program if you visit a spiritual community especially the month of kartik is going on now then you will also be benefited from it because you will now uh, be you you will now get spiritual desires by hearing by talking by associating with them otherwise uh, you will if you just keep associating with materialistic people and material communities you will just get material desires and nothing more than that okay so therefore it is very important that along with material desires you also cultivate spiritual desires and that will come when you visit the 11th house which is a spiritual community okay and spiritual community is also the place where you have the chance to serve great souls like rishabh dev says in the fifth canto of the shrimad bhagavatam he says mahat sevanam he says that right ahur vimukte shu he says when you serve great souls the doors to liberation open all right the doors to spiritual perfection they will open up automatically people are going people are asking i want moksha i want mukti i want liberation this that they are knocking the door of mukti devi but she's not opening 
बट वेन यू सर्व ग्रेट पर्सनैलिटीज ग्रेट साधुज ग्रेट सेंट्स ग्रेट पर्सनैलिटीज devotees of lord vishnu then what happens is the doors to liberation will open up for you they will open up and they will welcome you oh my dear sir my dear madam please come inside <laughs> we don't have to keep knocking tuck 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 they will open up spontaneously for us it will be awarded to us right because lord krishna is very pleased when we serve his great souls uh, his, his great devotees okay so that is why rishabdev says to his hundred sons lead uh, the senior most uh, and the most qualified of them being bharat maharaj after whom uh, the holy land of india is named as bharat varsha right so therefore it's very important that we cultivate right desires in the association of right people otherwise it can uh, create mayhem in our life okay so therefore when now saturn is transiting aquarius there are certain things which we can do to actually improve our lives okay so the first thing that we should do or we need to or we must do it and this is something e either we do it ourselves or we are forced to do which is you know we have to work hard because saturn is in its multricorn sign and saturn is in aquarius which is again lauded by saturn himself right so we have to work hard but not just like a donkey you know there's this a discussion and debate on like uh, somebody said we should work 70 hours okay <laughs> well you can work 40 30 or 100 hours but if you do not have the right goal and the right motivation then hard work doesn't yield much success okay oops it will yield but it doesn't yield uh, success beyond a certain point okay so you have to work hard but you also have to be aware of what you are working and you also should have a good uh, path a good um, it, it's like you should know about the the stages which will come you no know, it's like saying okay when you go from one place to the other you know after 5 kilometers what comes after 10 20 then otherwise if you're just randomly going it doesn't work so there are milestones in every journey so you have to channelize the milestones properly okay you have to channelize your energies properly through those milestones and you have to know that you are progressing so you have to have accountability do self audit and check you know are you getting the results are you working hard in the right direction otherwise if you are just working you know you may work but you may not be successful all right the next thing that you need to do is you have to check your social circle what is going on what kind of desires are they putting in your mind if they are putting tamasic asuric and hellish desires in your mind which are in tamoguna which are in mode of ignorance then you need to get rid of that of them i don't care who they are they may be your school friends your friends from bachelors masters or phd or your relatives or whoever you have to get rid of them to a large extent you may not be able to cut off them completely but <clears throat> if they are planting unwanted desires if they are planting anarthas in you if they are discussing about the opposite sex you know they are discussing about drugs alcohol sex porn and they are discussing of you know all the useless stuff you know like which cricketer is getting married to which film star and all this right so then what happens is we will also get these desires from them because these desires will fall in our ears and we'll feel oh that person is having an affair maybe i can also try right so it's it's very dangerous if you have such people so that is why it is very important that you have a circle of people who motivate who motivate you who are who want you to do good in life okay because many times people just tell oh i want you to do good in life but they actually don't want or maybe they say i want you to do good but not more than me all right so this is where you can actually judge if somebody is your friend so if you are doing better than somebody and if that person is happy for you then most likely that person is your friend but if somebody claims to be your friend and you can see it they are not happy they are happy if you are doing good but the moment you try to exceed them you know they are happy with you so then you know oh, you are you, you have a bunch of enemies disguising as friends right so that's a very easy way to judge who you should keep in your social circle okay and when you are having success who motivates you who inspires you who congratulates you 
Okay, and uh, when you're having downfall, who are the people who come and say, oh, yeah, we always knew you are a, such a loser, right? You you are good for nothing. You are a big zero. You know, there are people who keep telling all this, right? <clears throat> so, of course, we may have uh, fall downs because of our bad habits and all this, you know, then if some well-wisher comes and hammers us like Vidura hammered Dhritarashtra at the end of the Kurukshetra war when he came back. He said, oh, you are living like a dog, like a dog is eating the remnants offered. You are eating the remnants like a dog offered by Bhima. Why did he say Bhima? Because Bhima was the one who killed all the hundred Kauravas, right? So, and when Dhritarashtra heard this, he was like, ah, that's it. I can't stay here. <laughs> I need to go to the forest now. It's intolerable. His... Viduna's words pierced his heart like, like a dagger and a sword and he got rid of his attachments. You know? So it's like we need some people who will be critical of us at times. But in general, if you are doing good and if you are not doing religious activities and then if somebody is always putting you down, hammering you, criticizing you, then well, maybe you need to distance yourself from that person. Okay, Otherwise, they have all the time in the world to um, actually, you know, uh, dishearten you. Okay. And the number three is you should go to networking events. Okay. Network, 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 like find people uh, who are doing better in your profession than you. Network with people who have better relationships than you. you know, then when you do this, then naturally you will uh, feel that I can also do. Because if they can do, he or she can do, why can't I do it? Of course, because he or she has done it, it doesn't matter that I will also be able to do it 100%. But if we do, if we see somebody, then we get inspired to do something, right? Otherwise, uh, if we see people who are always, you know, doing wrong things, we are also inspired. If he can do, she can do, why can't I do it, right? Like people say, oh, he's drinking, why can't I drink, you know? So, so it's like that, you know, uh, the, the desire is contagious, activities are contagious. So you see one doing something, the other you also want to do. So network with people who are better than you materially, uh, physically, spiritually, you know, relationship-wise, career-wise, in any sense, you know, whenever you find somebody is <clears throat> better than you, you know, please uh, take guidance. And this is the next point, you know, this is like point number four which is, you know, you should always try to seek guidance. Like in the Srimad Bhagavatam, there is a, a place where uh, it is said, you know, the secret of happiness. The secret of happiness is whenever you meet somebody more qualified than you, take guidance from them. Take enlightenment from them. Take their knowledge. Don't be envious. Okay. Then the second is whenever you meet somebody who is equal to you, who is at your own level, then try to share from them, share with them your experiences and also learn from them. Treat them as a friend. And number three, whenever you see somebody is uh, not as knowledgeable as you, somebody is junior to you, okay, junior not just by age or position, but in terms of experience, don't try to exploit them. Don't try to abuse them. Try to enlighten them, provided they ask you, all right? <laughs> But what we do is opposite. Whenever we somebody we see somebody who is below us, we try to abuse them. We try to you know harass them. We try to you know torture them, torment them. Okay. Instead of uplifting and enlightening, enlightening. And whenever we somebody who is equal to us, we like to brag and boast. You know, oh, I did this. You know, you can see this very much. You know, in school reunions. You know, you go. People are like boasting. Oh, I was in Google, Microsoft, and all this. You know, I did this. You know. Oh, I could have done this, but I didn't do. You will very clearly see it. You know, people are boasting like donkeys all the time. Okay. Especially to their equals because everybody one once wanted to excel their equals and, you know, maybe they could or maybe they couldn't. So whenever they have something good, they will try to show as if they've done 10 times bigger things. Okay. And whenever we meet somebody who is more experienced, then we are envious. We are like finding faults, you know, oh, pe ye galti hai. Isne aisa kiya, usne aisa kiya. No, this is not nice. Okay. This is not good. Okay. So take guidance from seniors and uh, share with your equals, learn from them and enlighten uh, your juniors. Okay. This is very important. Otherwise, we will feel that uh, the whole world is collapsing on us. Okay. So this is point number five. And point number six, as you know, Leo is the opposite side. So you have to ask yourself, why am I doing these things in my life? 
anything it could be any area of life not just you know your profession or marriage it could be anything that you are doing you know why are you doing so for example you are making videos why are you doing it you are posting content in instagram why are you doing you are going to the office why so the why should be very clear when the why is very clear the how and when and all these are not very important you know they will be figured out eventually Okay, so find your purpose. Ask yourself, why are you doing something? Why at all? If tomorrow this is not there in your life, how will your life be? Okay. And number seven, which is most important. And this is something which I have said before is that please try to associate yourself with the spiritual community. This will be very helpful because if you do this, then you will realize that most of the problems that you have is because of your uncontrolled mind. So when the mind is controlled, when you are chanting mantras, you are doing spiritual practices, you are visiting a spiritual community, then you realize that, oh yeah, you know, I can control the mind. It's not very difficult. I mean, it's not easy, of course. It's a nightmare to control the mind sometimes. But in general, 95% of the times, you can control the mind to a reasonable good extent that you don't go and do uh, nonsense activities, nonsensical activities, okay? But if you are just like... As the scriptures say, Mano rathe na sati dhavato bahi, which means you are just going in the chariot of the mind, you know, Mano rathe na sati dhavato. The chariot of the mind, Mano rath is taking you here, there, or today I want this, that, I want him, her, everybody. <laughs> okay, so <clears throat> it's very important that we cultivate spiritual desires, all right? So we should please, uh, please read the Srimad Bhagavatam, the Bhagavad Gita or whichever uh, religious tradition you are inspired by, have have a guru. You may not have a diksha guru, but you should at least have one shiksha guru from whom you take guidance, okay? And you should visit one spiritual community at least in the weekend. You know, that will, that will take you way ahead than so many, uh, like learning about astrology, learning about management, learning about numerology, learning about, you know, uh, so many other things, you know, which people do. Okay, so visit a spiritual community and enlighten yourself. All right. So thank you so much. That will be all from my side. Uh, if you are new, then please subscribe to the channel. And if you felt that this video helped you, then please click the thumbs up and share it with somebody who needs to know this. All right. And if you want a personalized consultation from me, you can always go to my website down in the description section or I'll also pin the dates uh, for my visit to Delhi uh, and other places in the description section. Hope to see you there. God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you'll find him. Thank you.